So now I got to start all over. I want to talk about being restored. A lot of times we go through difficulties, things, but the Lord doesn't want us to stay down. You know, maybe you're here today and you're lacking in some respect. Maybe it's been hard for you to pray. Maybe it's been hard for you to get victory over something. You know, the enemy wants to keep you captive. The enemy wants to keep you struggling with the same issues. You see, if you break free, if you rise up, if you come to life again, you could capture those things that you lost. Those things that you been hoping for, you can regain those things. I was reading about Nehemiah. Nehemiah was working for a famous king uh, of of the time. And one day he went into the king's presence and he says, man, I'm discouraged. My fellow countrymen, they're kind of struggling. They're going through a difficult time. The exact words are this in Nehemiah uh, 1. It says, those who survived the exile and are back in the providence are in great trouble. The city is broken. So what Nehemiah did, he was started on to rebuild the city, the walls. What do you need to rebuild in your life that's been broken? Something has happened to it? Maybe something that has fallen out or something that has uh, gotten away. I just want to look for a moment. Nehemiah chapter 4, the scriptures are up there. When Sembalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, He became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews. And in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? When will they restore the wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble, burned as they are? Tobiah, who was at... His side said, what they are building, even a fox, if it climbed on it, would break down the wall of stones. Hear us, O God. We are despised. Turn the insults back on their heads. Give them over as plunder. What Nehemiah was basically saying, he was was, uh, talking out loud a little bit, but the first quick thing is, is when Sembalad heard that we were rebuilding, here's what I want to say to you quickly, is is that you got to keep rebuilding. You got to keep trying. You got to go back to those things. You got to start praying again. You got to start being who God has called you to be. You see, the walls were breaking down. The city was not doing what verse uh, 2 sacrifices. Jerusalem was no more. You see, the people were brought into exile. And they were ruled, they were kind of slaves to others, and they kind of uh, uh, lost their freedom. And now the period of correction was over. You see, God allowed them to go in exile. You know that, don't you? I, I don't, don't, please don't take this the wrong way, and, I, and I'm sorry, and I'm not saying I, I'm right, but you know, I do believe that God allows things to come into the world. What do you mean by that? I don't know. God allows things to bring correction to the world. But he doesn't want the world to stay down. He, wants, he doesn't want people to lose out. You see, God created the world that it would be alive and well. Can these stones live? But others saw, the enemy saw it as uh, rubble, broken stones. Maybe your life has been broken the last few years. I'm not saying terrible. I'm not saying everything lost. But maybe there's been some shifting, realigning, and you're, you're here wondering what does going forward look like for you? 
You see, God wants to restore your life. You're, you're, God's not done with you. While you have breath, there's still some good things that God wants to do in your life. God does want you to marry if you want to marry. God does want you to start that business if you want to do it. God wants to open a door for you. There's some good things that the Lord has for you. But it would be easy for you to be discouraged. It would be easy for you to, to say that my hope is gone. Yes, God is allowed. You know, this story and in the story in the scriptures, did you know that God regularly corrected his people? He allowed them to go into Egypt. You think the Egyptian, do you think that the Egypt of the day, do you think they had more power over God's people? But here's what happened. They, they lost their power because they started to fold within and, they, and, and, and then others came and uh, lorded over them. They went into Babylon. What I'm saying is the Old Testament and the scriptures are full of God's people being corrected by the hand of God. But he always then turned his face toward them and he wanted them to get back up. He wanted them to not give up on their hopes or their dreams. Maybe something has not happened your way that has not gone your way. Maybe it's a correction. Or maybe it's something else that you had nothing to do with and you're just a victim of the circumstances. Whatever it may be, it's probably irrelevant. But we're talking about rebuilding your life, being restored. We're talking about getting back to the place that God has called you. So we see that they were rebuilding. Before quickly I, I go on, I, I just want to say, keep rebuilding. Keep trying. Keep praying. Keep trying to get there. What, what am I saying? Well, well, that's what you're doing now. You know what? You're rebuilding by giving God your time, by by. Uh, putting God first today. You're rebuilding. I want to say keep that going throughout the week. Your life is too important. Don't discard the things that are important that are going to get you there. They were rebuilding. They were talking about it before. You know what? Sometimes you could talk about doing good, doing right. Sometimes you just got to jump in and, and start doing it and make that decision that you're going to pray, that you're going to live right, that you're going to change some habits. They were rebuilding. First of all, uh, Nehemiah was talking about it. says it's broken down. The city's in rubble. I don't want to say your life's in rubble. This is a story about the people of God. It is. It's a story about a, a nation, about the world. I will say this. I'm sorry, and, and I don't mean it to any harm, but the world is broken. It is. It's a flawed world. Without Jesus, we're, we're lost. We're nothing. I don't know about you, but I see a broken world. Oh, I see hope. I see good things. But I see that the enemy has destroyed some lives, destroyed some, some people, and but God doesn't want it to stay that way. So we're going to be hopeful this morning. We're going to lift up the standard. But it's true. Nehemiah saw it for what it was. Can you see if your life is broken? Can you see that your life is broken? Nehemiah saw that the walls were torn down. Some people are walking around this life and they're broken. They're, they're lost and they don't see it. But Nehemiah saw it and he, 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 you know what it says? It says he sat down and started to weep. In order for us to have change in our life, we got to grieve for where we're at. If our nation is going to get better, we got we to gotta grieve for it. That's why, let me tell you something. You know, I've, I've been work, looking at something of this in Acts, but you know, let me tell you, if the church is the real church, the church is the salt of the world, and we're supposed to be praying for, for, for our world. It's true. As a matter of fact, as we, we said earlier, the church has an important part in this thing. That's you. Well, they're rebuilding. Heard that we were rebuilding. Keep rebuilding. Keep trying. And I'm moving on. Keep Keep doing your part and, and get in the midst of it. And don't give up. 
Don't, don't, you know, meaning better your life. Be a better you. Be a better you. Be kinder to people. Try this week. You know some things are wrong. Say, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep doing it this way. I'm going to do better. I'm going to be a better me. I'm going to try better. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do my part. I know how to live this life. I'm not going to be uh, broken down. I'm not going to, as people say, I'm not going to uh, broken walls and a city and not ha have it. I'm not, no, I'm going to be who God has called me to be. But the second quick thing is they're ridiculed. You know, when you start to do what I'm telling, saying here, the enemy's going to come in and try to tear you down. You know, when you thought when you came to church, when you came to the Lord, things just start being a little easier. Why would they be easier? Now you're, you mean business. Now you're a, a life of purpose. Now you're a life that you're, you're, you're not just marking days. You're, you're in this thing. And now you've got a life of purpose. Now the enemy's going to attack you. Now the enemy's coming after you. Now the enemy says, no, 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 I had them in the clutches. I, I, I controlled their life. Now they're breaking away. The enemy now started to demoralize them, ridicule them, tear them down. That's what's going to happen. You start to get off drugs. You start to change it. You start to do something. The enemy's coming after you. You start to change up something where you move towards God. You start to say, I'm going to raise a godly family. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, be committed to the Lord. Come hell or high water, I'm going to try. It's hard in the world I'm living in. It's tough to live a righteous life in a depraved world. It's tough. I admit it. Everything within me wants to do this, but i got to do this. And the enemy in the presence will do everything. The next two verses are the second point. The attacks. All the different things. What are they doing? You have questions. You have questions. What are they building? What am I doing in my life? And the enemy is going to try to hurt you. The enemy is going to try to get you to stop. Why go to church? What's that going to do? Try that. I've been doing it for a few years. Nothing's changed. Let me tell you something. A lot has changed in your life. God's brought you a long way. God is working in your life. God is powerful in your life. Let me, let me tell you something. Without Jesus, you're, you're nothing. You're doomed. Without Jesus, you don't have a life. So let me tell you something. You better stay with him. You better stay with God. Yeah, it's, it's about the best. Let me, it's, it's, it's the best thing you got going in your life. So, but the enemy was attacking. The enemy was tearing down. The enemy was trying to, to get him to stop. Why are you going to listen to the enemy? Do you think the enemy cares about your life? Do you think the enemy wants you to become the person that God has called you to be? God has great things in store for you in your life. God is opening doors for you. God is, God, there's things still ahead of you. There's next generation that's even coming and your seeds are in the ground. This thing is, is serious business. That's why it says when they were praying, they're praying earnestly. To be earnest, you know when you pray, you, you start to be earnest? The most successful people in the world are praying people. Well, I don't know if Bill Gates is praying or, or the other guy. I'm, I'm not talking that. That's success. That's one way. But I mean, when you start to pray, everything changes. The earth quakes. Prayer is a powerful force that God has given you. Don't underestimate it. Prayer moves mountains. That's you. You have that within you. You can define, you can push back the enemy. You can tell the enemy to get under your feet. Well, last thing, how do they respond? They're ridiculed. You're going to be ridiculed. If you're trying to get the applause of this world, you're, you're going to come up discouraged. This world is not your friend. It's not. 
Matter of fact, I will say this. If you're accepted by the world, you're probably not praying enough. I know that's tough, and I don't like talking that way. But every time I see in the Scripture when the church prayed, when the people prayed, they were attacked. You chose this life. You chose to follow Jesus. It's the cross. I'm not saying it's gloom and doom. I never said that. It's an exciting life. It's, it's, the, old, it's the way to go. I went turn it in for nothing. Sure, you've had struggles, but would you trade it for something? No, you, you've chosen it. You made the right decision. No, you didn't chose it. God chose you. God chose you. You think you chose him? He called you. You just responded after he loved you enough, after he showed you the way. And you said yes. And you're here serving him now. But the enemy is going to try to get you off track. The enemy is going to try to get you. No, no reason in a way. Don't reason in a way. God's ways are not the world's ways. So you got to stand up. Oh, I'm sorry, but here's how I like the way they responded. They were ridiculed. But then they said, verse 4, hear us, O God. And I'm saying when you're attacked this week, when you're discouraged, don't go back to yesterday's ways and do it another way. Just talk to Jesus. Call on the Lord. Ask him to help you. I don't know any other way. If there was a, another way, I'd tell you. The only way I see is the way that the scriptures teach us and the saints of old. Here's the way they did it. Hear us, O God. So here's what you need to say when you're hurt, when you're despondent, when, when, when people have hurt you and you've been crushed and wounded. Your family is going sideways. Your life is out of control. Hear us, O God. So you, you go to God. Let me tell you something, he'll never disappoint you. Let me tell you something, my brother, my sister, Jesus doesn't disappoint. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through him. So let me tell you, you're on the right track. You've made the right decision. It may be a long, narrow road. It may be hard to travel it sometimes. But don't switch over to the short wide road where many travel it. Keep going on that long, narrow road. It gets windy, it gets tough, it gets hard, but your destination is right and correct. What God has started in you, he's going to finish. So when you're despondent, when you're hurting, hear us, oh God. Hear me. Pray to God. Let me tell you something, and I'm Gone over my time. Prayer is a thing that works. You know what it says about that and about Peter there in Acts? You know it says that the church was praying. Earnestly praying. You know what I like? What it says right after that? It says that Peter, in the middle of the night, an angel came and visited Peter. And tapped him on his shoulder and said, get up, get up. And, and, and it let him escape. And they escaped and got away. Here's the neat thing. That's why you don't want to change this thing in. You got the best thing going for you. God's going to visit you and your enemy. God's going to help you out in the middle of the night. God's going to do some things for you. Why? Because when you pray, there's nothing. Listen, God has compassion on the brokenhearted. God has compassion on those that are humble and come to him with a broken heart, a meek heart. So, the church was praying, and you know what happened right after that? An angel came in the middle of the night. Here's what I want to say to you, and I am closing. God's going to deliver you. God's going to help you. God's not going to forget about you because you're going to pray about it. You're going to take it to God, and God's going to deliver you. Peter was set to go and be on trial, and in the middle of the night, before the morning, God delivered him. Here's what I want to say to you. God's got your back. God will fight your battles. Stay with Jesus. He'll take you places that you never dreamed were possible. Hey, a matter of fact, buckle up. Jesus loves you. He cares for you. And he is more uh, wanting you to get there in, than you do in your life. In Jesus' name.
Father, we love you and we thank you. We're so very thankful for you being our God. Help us, help us, we pray. Help your people, we pray. We love you. Let's repeat this together, can we? Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my mistakes. Sorry for my sin. Come into my life. I make you my Lord 